talk a little bit about what did you come up with the idea for dynamic rendering? Was that just like a company powwow? Because that's something entirely different. And once again, for our, our audience, dynamic rendering um, and our audience who hopefully are you know are, are knowledgeable about SEO is that Google and other search engines have these bots that go in and scan your website. And those bots have a limited time because there's billions of, of websites out there to scan your site. So going back to learning the language and providing that language to Google, what dynamic rendering is, is you serve a, a, a version of your website to the bot itself that doesn't look anything like what the user sees, but it allows that bot to crawl it and get more of an in-depth crawl based on the fact that you're giving it to them fat or giving it to the bot faster. Um, if you want to touch on that too a little bit, go for it. Well, let me just correct you just a little bit. It actually okay. does a lot like the regular site, you know, that okay. users. And there's a cool tool if you ever, I don't know if you've done this, Ryan, it's pretty neat. There's a cool called, it's like a user agent switcher <clears throat> and it's a plugin in your browser and you can mm -hmm. actually change what user agent you want to view the page as. You can change it to a Google bot, you can change it to a Bing bot. And so you can go to a dynamically rendered Huckabye customer and put that extension in and flip it to a Google bot and actually interact with the site just like Google does when they come and crawl. Okay. It's a really crazy concept. And it's a big break from Google because forever they said, you know, we just crawl with the user, user sees and um, we're not interested, you know, no tricks and stuff like that. And then it really came about because of JavaScript. JavaScript's kind of their nemesis. Um, yep. JavaScript was powering more and more content on the internet. Uh, they can't crawl it with their traditional HTML crawler. They have to use, they put it to what's called a rendering queue, which is very similar technology to just your Chrome browser, um, where it, oh, you know, renders the page and then they come in with a different bot and they're able to index everything. But it takes like, 10 times the computing capacity to do that than it does just to have an HTML bot. So if you look at like their expense structures and what they're spending on servers and, and computing time, it was really a problem. So that's really why they opened up this dynamic rendering. And no, it was not my idea. Okay. <laughs> Case Matthewson, our CTO, you know well, mm -hmm. he, um, he came to me one day, like we had talked about so we had something um, at Overstock that was not just for bots, but we called it the caching layer. And the caching layer was like pre-cached of our top, call it million pages every night. We would cache them with Akamai and they'd be there and they'd be really fast. We just, we realized very early how important page speed was, not just for SEO, but that it was very important for conversion rates. And, mm -hmm. and so we just had a huge push for a couple of years to make the site as fast as possible. And the solution was architected and built was this called, we call it the caching layer. And it, <clears throat> it did its job, it was amazing. And I remember telling Chase about this and he was like, well, that could be a really cool software product. And then he learned about, he, he studies Google, you know, and his team, you know, they're very, very thorough. They're very thoughtful. They, they read everything that comes out. They watch all the, the you know, whenever a, a Google um, developer speaks or they watch the videos when there's Google IO, they, you know, they tune in and they, they just really pay attention. And it was about two years ago and it wasn't even written. They just saw, heard about dynamic rendering from a Google engineer talking at Google IO. And so he started looking into it and I was just blown away. Like he definitely discovered it for sure. We, and he, he ultimately architected it. We, we talked about it, like what it could do um, because it was such a big change. And we were pretty much, I think we were the first company to offer a dynamic render rendering solution. And, and to be clear, we have the, the best structured data product in the world today, um, which is awesome. Oh, by far. Yeah. We also have the best dynamic rendering product in the world. Um, sometimes we're more pricey than the competition that's come after us, but you're getting the best. And it's not so pricey that it doesn't pay for itself. That's for sure. Because with some of these things, um, you don't want to skimp, right? It's really important to get your structured data right. And if you look at the revenue impact with good structured data versus broken structured data, 
you know, it's kind of a no brainer. So that I got to give all the credit to Chase. Um, he's brilliant. Uh, his team's brilliant. And they delivered dy a dynamic rendering solution, which is not an easy task. If you think of like, okay, go into salesforce.com, make a copy of that site that's great for search bots and loads at like 100 milliseconds per page. Like that's a difficult dev task. That's a tough one, yeah. <laughs> they, their first version was in six months. And they were heads down and it was the hardest I've ever seen our engineering team sprint. And uh, yeah, first to market, <clears throat> got a bunch of big customers on it and um, it's an exciting product. Um, it's cool to see the next evolution of it now coming in the form of a, a user version with our page speed product. Um, but the dynamic rendering thing is, I think for any SEO that's been around the business for a long time, when we heard about dynamic rendering, everybody was like, what? That's something you can do now? And it was yeah. such a big break that for months and months, even today, when we're on sales calls, people will be like, well, won't you get penalized for that? And what, what, won't you get in trouble? And it's like, no, here's like the page on Google that tells you to do this. Um, so it's a real, I think dynamic rendering personally, I think you've been in SEO maybe longer than me. I think I learned about it in like 2006 or 2007. And it's the biggest like single change they've made um, since I've been tracking them other than maybe a couple like of the big uh, bad link updates that that crushed everybody. But I think from a sort of like what they're looking for perspective, if you were on the up and up and not doing any black hat stuff, um, it was the biggest change I've seen in whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of funny because I'll, I'll go into, you know, Search Console and look at some of our customers after they've implemented dynamic rendering. And you can just see those crawl stats go nuts in the crawl report, <clears throat> uh, especially Google's or Search Console's new crawl report too. So it's it's really for for Huckabye and, and to be able to figure that out within six months was there's there's not a lot of software teams out there. So I got to give props to the software team and the developers. They're 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 awesome.